going on. Okay. Can I start? Uh, just a minute. And we are streaming right now. Good afternoon and welcome at next lecture. It's my pleasure to introduce Maria Grenu. Maria is Lithuanian artist and PhD candidate at the University of Lapland in uh, Finland. Her artistic focus in the last decade has uh, been twofold. On one hand, addressing a post-humanist take on performance, production, and documentation. On the other hand, post-colonial memory and decolonization. As her uh, main themes in performance, painting, and print paint, paint making artworks. For us, Maria prepared a lecture with title, A Rising Memory, Placeness of the Narrative. If you have some questions, please write to chat at YouTube channel. We will return to them at the end. Now, Maria, you can start with your lecture. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, thanks for invitation to contribute uh, to uh, this uh, program. Uh, I uh, have been thinking towards uh, uh, the ways to start this uh, lecture, but uh, uh, my uh, thought is that I will come into the content of the lecture slowly by presenting myself and presenting the uh, standpoint which I have towards discussion of uh, uh, these uh, absolutely not uh, easy uh, issues as uh, uh, the memory, the history, uh, decolonization, aesthetical means. So my interest towards uh, these uh, themes are based on uh, the issues which are connected to my background as the Lithuanian artist, as uh, uh, the person uh, who have heard about uh, various uh, narratives from uh, storytellings of uh, my family when looking into archival photos, when uh, as a child, uh, talking to the neighbors uh, in uh, the countryside uh, area, the village in Lithuania called uh, Ilgakimis, uh, discussing with my grandparents uh, what uh, happened to the land, what land did my grandparents own, and uh, how this uh, uh, history related to the uh, land unfolded through many decades. And uh, all these uh, questions I have uh, had in my mind since very, very early uh, years, uh, uh, like um, nine, 10 years old uh, child talking to their grandparents, to uh, neighbors. And uh, for me, the levels of uh, understanding uh, of the history of my family and on my land unfolded uh, with the years, unfolded uh, with aging. And uh, uh, I must say uh, that uh, this uh, deep interest and uh, uh, deep concern about uh, how art can talk about different issues otherwise what can we talk through art, what we cannot perhaps by words. Uh, these questions led me to the uh, current location uh, where uh, I am. Uh, well, I have been uh, quite some three last years in the Arctic North, uh, uh, doing my uh, PhD in Rovaniemi, it's uh, Finland, but also now uh, from summer, I have started to work uh, as director of a uh, summit center for contemporary art in Karashok in uh, Norway. And I must say that uh, here, uh, my journey of understanding what can we do through art, how can we curate complicated uh, themes, uh, themes about colonial memory. How can we discuss these themes with uh, various audiences? It uh, 
unfolded year by year, level by uh, level. And uh, now from the current position where I am in, I can say that uh, uh, I definitely uh, see so many interconnectedness between Lithuanian art, Lithuanian life art, and art of Sami people. We talk about similar issues, about different histories, but about similar ways to express and to discuss the pain of the past uh, years. So um, this is my standpoint where I have arrived to uh, uh, through many uh, years of my practice as artist, researcher, and uh, curator. Uh, the uh, lecture will be built upon this position, which I have been uh, introducing to you uh, uh, now. And uh, I will uh, look into various uh, practices of uh, performance art in uh, Lithuania. So we will uh, look into the historical context of the media of performance art in Lithuania, also uh, contemporary practices. Uh, we will also look into the ways uh, how uh, Lithuanian performance artists were talking about the uneasy uh, issues of uh, history, memory, colonial history, decolonization. And uh, uh, the examples which I will uh, unfold uh, for you are uh, practices uh, from the late 80s, uh, still the time when uh, Lithuania was uh, included uh, in the Soviet Union. And there will be some gap between the uh, time frame. I will talk also about the uh, newer practices uh, of uh, uh, performance art, which are in a way dealing with similar issues of memory, of history, but from the scale of the last approximately 10 uh, years. So we will uh, dive into the twofold uh, journey, the journey through the history of Lithuanian performance art and the journey through the uneasy uh, topics, historical topics told through the um, practices of artists. Uh, so, my position is, one of the positions is of the uh, practitioner performance artist. And uh, something uh, what I was uh, working with uh, now more than 10 years ago uh, was uh, based on the deep interest in public spaces in Vilnius, uh, the monuments, the architectural parts, parts of reliefs, parts of the sculpture. There were so many changes going on in uh, Lithuania, in uh, different cities, different landscapes, but uh, uh, Vilnius as the uh, case of uh, uh, this uh, discussion. In this photo, you can definitely see that there is something removed, something missing uh, from this uh, part of the sculpture. And uh, uh, you might guess uh, what is missing. Uh, the uh, symbolics uh, connected to the Soviet uh, regime. Uh, I can uh, say also from today's position that uh, this item which you see uh, right now on uh, the slide belonged uh, uh, to the sculptures uh, which were placed uh, in the uh, central uh, square uh, in uh, Vilnius. Uh, these sculptures now from the position of uh, 2022 are all removed and uh, the central square is uh, 
uh, redesigned uh, uh, into the very nice recreational uh, area with fountains in the summertime. Uh, you can see uh, there are now uh, many children playing with the fountains, running uh, under the water, getting wet, uh, uh, laughing, running around. So uh, now this place, the square is made into uh, very popular, very appreciated by the local um, people. Uh, recreational area. Anyway, 10 years ago, they were still standing uh, uh, the parts of the sculptures, the parts of the sculptures, what I would mean by that, that uh, uh, perhaps uh, I need to illustrate now that uh, uh, in the uh, time when uh, Lithuania gained its independence, all uh, the figures uh, who represented um, politicians or uh, activists uh, of the Soviet regimes, all these figures were removed in most of the places. Uh, of course, uh, removed into um, one of the places, the woods, the forest, uh, Gruta Parkas, uh, which uh, is uh, now the place uh, of attraction for them tourists who want to see those removed sculptures, but still in 2011, there were standing uh, some elements, some parts of the uh, sculptural complex. And uh, those parts had uh, very, very visible traces of removed parts. So as you can see that the removal of the symbolics of the uh, remains uh, was happening um, step by step. For me, this was a, a very um, special moment in, in the way to, to witness uh, uh, this changing landscape. And uh, uh, in, in some way, I just couldn't uh, resist but uh, photograph, film these uh, uh, spaces and uh, also perform in these uh, spaces. Um, so, um, well, uh, perhaps uh, before uh, diving into the uh, more examples, I uh, need to unfold a little bit of the theory, uh, which you can see on the slide, but I will also go uh, little, little by little uh, just to explain uh, what will be meant by the terminology which I will uh, use when talking about uh, the uh, events, performances and phenomena. So yeah, first of all, what is performance? Because uh, uh, I can see in the discussions that there might be uh, often a, a need to specify from what uh, standpoint uh, am I talking about performance. So uh, I am uh, leaning upon the definition by Richard Schechner that uh, performance is uh, a wide scope of activity. Uh, it doesn't necessarily need to be theatrical performance on stage. Uh, it can be even the action of um, teaching, the action of participation, the action of uh, being in the space with others. Uh, so when I talk about performance and when I will talk about performance, it will be much wider scope than, uh, than performative action on stage. It will be the uh, performance as uh, interactions, as uh, co-participation, co-development of the performative situation. And uh, uh, in the perspective of uh, this uh, lecture now, and again, perspective of my uh, position within performance, performance is as research. Performance is as the place to collect material to rethink the questions, to rethink uh, how to develop the way of thinking or the artwork next. 
and uh, uh, we will talk about erasing and uh, we already talked about erasing by this uh, very first photo which I uh, introduced and uh, uh, erasing as removing of uh, the physical traces of colonial past. Uh, in the first slide, you saw uh, a removed part. What happens when we remove part? Then we have the narrative of the part is not being there anymore. So uh, removal uh, would uh, not necessarily only uh, mean relocation of something into some other place, but uh, it would uh, most likely also mean having the new story, the new narrative of the item which is not there anymore. We know something was there and we see it's not there anymore. Uh, and the site of performance, it's uh, uh, the placeness, uh, the, the place uh, which uh, carries the narratives of uh, their own. Uh, and uh, then I will uh, talk further about um, the artistic performative practices in Lithuania. You will see that placeness is crucial. Placeness allow for something. Placeness give extra story upon the story told through the performance. And uh, uh, we will talk about colonization and decolonization. So uh, in the context of uh, Lithuanian uh, history, uh, the colonization takes place until 1991 until Lithuania uh, getting um, independence. And uh, there were many not at all nice things happening in the period uh, 1940, 1991. Uh, myself being now in the Arctic uh, uh, region cannot stop but uh, think uh, about the many narratives the Arctic region has. Peninsula Kola, for example, as uh, the place where many Lithuanian families were deported uh, by the Soviet uh, regime because of various issues. One of those is uh, families who owned large uh, piece of land. The land needed to be included into the uh, collective farming. If people resisted, they were relocated into the Arctic North. Uh, so many, many such things are understood, remembered as pain within the history of uh, Lithuania. Can we decolonize through art-based methods? Can we open discussion can we narrate the, narr the narrative, narrate a story in different ways than just word-based or text-based activity? So uh, what to decolonize in Lithuanian culture or art? It's uh, very interesting to think towards uh, aesthetic, artistic production of uh, many years in Lithuania, the same period, 1940s, 1991, and uh, uh, people, art practitioners uh, who were the members of Artists' Union in Lithuania, they were producing the aesthetic uh, output uh, which carried the values of Soviet regime, they were doing this production in order to have some financial income, in order to have something out in the public spaces. There was not uh, at all much uh, space for critique 
or improvisation uh, at uh, that time. So many of the art practitioners uh, were doing paintings, doing sculptures, uh, getting awards for those uh, sculptures, uh, making their career actually, yeah, through the production of the um, artworks, which were carrying the Soviet regime values. Uh, and uh, in the end of uh, 80s, by the end of uh, 80s, uh, that was uh, the moment, uh, very important moment in uh, Lithuanian art history, not uh, researched well uh, enough uh, yet. Uh, the first uh, festivals of performance art in the entire Lithuanian art history, the very first festivals of performance art. 1988 was the first performance art festival. AN88, uh, it was titled, and one year later, AN89. Uh, and uh, I have been uh, having... Uh, a pleasure of working together with uh, uh, the artists who were involved in uh, this uh, festival. Uh, and um, the meeting with uh, one of those artists, Arvidas Baltrunas, was uh, in uh, 2016. Basically, uh, that was the year when I got uh, very much aware of this festival. And uh, through the conversations with the artist, I uh, got uh, uh, contacts uh, to other of uh, his uh, colleagues uh, who um, were involved in organizing and creating artworks for the festival. So. Uh, from 2016, uh, I uh, developed uh, quite some conference presentations and uh, also a research uh, paper uh, was uh, published uh, where I attempt to understand and communicate further uh, how this event is interesting for us contemporary artists. And uh, uh, again, uh, uh, my position as the researcher is uh, of the practitioner, of the uh, performance artist myself. So uh, in uh, many ways, I uh, was uh, thinking towards the methodologies, how to uh, approach uh, the uh, conversations with my colleagues who were uh, the authors of this performance art festival. And uh, uh, well, uh, the methodology is uh, reflexive research. Reflexive research uh, uh, is uh, uh, quite a special methodology to work with because uh, uh, here the artist is quite explicitly, uh, or the researcher is quite explicitly uh, saying that one comes from the uh, field of study. So in my case, I come from performance as field of study. And from this position, through reflexive research, I uh, communicate with my colleagues involved in historical uh, Lithuanian performance. And uh, in this way, the uh, research is built upon this uh, interlayering uh, of uh, my experience and their experience. Uh, so um, just uh, to explain a little bit uh, about uh, the uh, history of uh, the first performance art festivals in Lithuania in 88 and 89. Uh, the location for these uh, festivals, uh, was uh, the small town in the uh, Anikshi region. Just for orientation, I will say that it's uh, uh, 100 kilometers uh, from the capital city, also about 100 kilometers from the second big city. So it's uh, uh, far away uh, from uh, uh, the big cities in Lithuania. And uh, 
The location for the event was uh, chosen very, very carefully. You can imagine that uh, the artist still in uh, the late 80s uh, uh, could not um, express uh, their critique towards uh, the political situation, their desire for freedom. Uh, the artists could have uh, had quite um, big problems uh, if uh, they were, um, come, if they came in the, um, uh, contact to, to the, uh, with the police or with, with uh, uh, some um, institutions uh, which uh, could have uh, impacted uh, their lives and career quite negatively if uh, it was uh, uh, seen the resistant artistic activity. So uh, Anikshi uh, region, it was far enough from everything, from the centers uh, of uh, the capital city. And uh, uh, they um, were creating the uh, festivals uh, for live art, but also as the arena to promote the Lithuanian uh, values, to promote the artistic desire for uh, freedom, the freedom of expression, the freedom of uh, uh, speech. And uh, the uh, festivals uh, involved even such uh, uh, performances, which uh, explicitly used the Lithuanian symbolics as a uh, the free colored uh, uh, flag, the Lithuanian flag, it was uh, uh, used by the artists in the public spaces. Anyway, uh, these uh, artistic actions, they, they were framed as performances, not as the political demonstrations, though uh, they had very, very clear uh, connection uh, of aesthetics and political uh, resistance. And, um, uh, the event very clearly, uh, this performance art festivals as the, the one entire event very clearly uh, was reflecting on performance also as the pedagogical space, as the uh, space of uh, uh, conversation, of dialogue, of uh, discussing what is uh, uh, necessary, what is urgent for the Lithuanian community, artistic community, perhaps first of all, as we started this uh, uh, lecture with uh, uh, me uh, spotting all these problems and many years of actually artists not having uh, freedom of uh, expression, uh, at all in the way how we understand the artistic practice now. So uh, uh, the photograph which is chosen for this uh, slide, it was, uh, uh, well, it was chosen for the reason because uh, uh, it uh, illustrates in, in, in the way this participatedness, this uh, uh, contact, this milieu of the uh, event as a performer is shaking hands with all the uh, people who came as the audience for uh, his uh, uh, performative action. Uh, so uh, the event wanted in many ways to involve people into the milieu, into the artistic um, expressions. And uh, uh, here uh, you might uh, have noticed already in uh, my previous slide, uh, the uh, performance artwork uh, Veteran Morning is from the first edition of uh, uh, the festival in uh, 88. And uh, this uh, performance was a collaborative uh, artwork by few performers, uh, Thomas Izilunas, uh, Sharunas Nakas and Arvidas Baltrunas. Uh, I had a pleasure to uh, talk, uh, to interview uh, uh, Sharunas Nakas and Arvidas Baltrunas out of these um, three uh, authors. Uh, so uh, 
This particular um, artwork, uh, I would like to unfold it a little bit more uh, uh, for you. So it had a few uh, sequences as uh, uh, the performers uh, in the uh, pajama uh, uh, clothes. Um, in the first sequence, uh, they would uh, uh, interact uh, with uh, the newspapers. Uh, Part of the newspapers uh, had uh, the political propaganda uh, content. Part of the newspapers had erotic content. Uh, so this uh, contained the first part of uh, performative action, followed by the next part where uh, the performers invited everyone involved in uh, the site of performance uh, to follow them towards uh, uh, the column. You can see in another image the black uh, uh, column. And uh, uh, then uh, with the audiences, they would uh, cover uh, the area around this column with smoke. Uh, so um, uh, that's... Uh, few sequences following one by one uh, in attempt to humoristically uh, comment on the uh, routines and honoring of uh, the uh, war uh, veterans. Uh, and uh, on the other side, working with the audiences very actively by uh, unfolding performance as such into the side of participation. So uh, that refers back to perhaps one of my first introductory sentences of uh, uh, this lecture that uh, the early Lithuanian performances had two aims. The one aim was opening up the discussion about heavy political issues, memory of the past, history, attempting to put up these discussions and uh, uh, unfold uh, the space for talking with the audiences. And on the other way, how these artists were talking with the audiences. So you uh, uh, might understand that for the art scene, for the artistic uh, uh, work of the late 80s in Lithuania, it was a very radical format uh, to set up the site of performance, to set up the interactions and actually to break the rules of what the artwork is at all. Uh, because uh, Lithuanian um, spectator, uh, visitor of the exhibitions was uh, very much used to the passive spectatorship, going to the galleries, uh, looking into the paintings, printmaking, sculptures. But participation in the artwork, it was really, radical innovation into how at all we would uh, understand art, understand what the artwork is. Uh, so uh, uh, from my perspective, um, as I started to investigate uh, these practices in dialogue with the authors of these early performances, uh, I found uh, many uh, reasons to uh, call it uh, performance pedagogies. Performance pedagogies carrying the pedagogical aim and performative aim. Uh, inspired by Fluxus pedagogies in many ways, in very direct way. Uh, as um, perhaps you have uh, uh, heard about uh, the Fluxus movement, which uh, had 
quite heavy and active uh, uh, landscape, uh, both in Europe and in the uh, USA in the early uh, 60s, followed by many decades after that. And uh, uh, one of the uh, key figures of uh, Flexus uh, uh, movement, uh, George Machunas or Jurgis Machunas uh, in Lithuanian, he was uh, Lithuanian uh, by um, his nationality. And uh, uh, what was very interesting that actually George Machunas, uh, he had the correspondence, uh, exchange letters with uh, some uh, key um, cultural uh, figures in uh, Lithuania uh, and uh, the artists who were involved in this festival, actually they were very much aware of existence of the uh, materials by Fluxus artists, uh, especially George Machunas, because uh, the items of the artworks by Fluxus artists, they came by post to Lithuania. They, they were there, they were there, and uh, they were in the hands of uh, uh, some, uh, as I mentioned, key figures. Vito uh, Taslandberg uh, is, uh, the main figure uh, who was professor in the um, music uh, conservatory in Vilnius at the time. And uh, uh, his students, without the Salzburg students were actually involved in this festival. So there are many interesting connections, many interesting moments uh, within uh, this festival uh, to notice. And uh, this uh, made, uh, uh, these events extremely exciting on many, many levels. Um, and uh, now I will uh, move uh, towards uh, some uh, uh, parallel uh, activities, or I am talking uh, about these activities in parallel to my uh, research on the historical Lithuanian uh, performance. Uh, so, uh, you might notice a huge gap uh, between 88 and uh, 2019, which you see under this uh, slide. Uh, so uh, in this presentation and generally in the, my research work on uh, the Lithuanian uh, performance art, I'm particularly interested in this first festival of performance art and how similar themes or even similar methods echo in the contemporary uh, activities of uh, artists in Lithuania. This is what uh, interests me most. So I will uh, not uh, talk at all about this gap of time between the first festival and what happened in the 90s and later. But uh, the next uh, project uh, which I uh, wanted to highlight for you uh, is uh, the project uh, called Shalini Project. It's uh, the initiative from uh, uh, KONAS uh, by the KONAS-based artist uh, Evelina uh, Shimkutia. Uh, how uh, this project is... Uh, relevant or connected to the discussion which uh, we had uh, before. Uh, the artist Evelina Shimkutia uh, studied uh, in uh, London for uh, quite a long time in the art academy there and after her studies uh, she came back to her uh, home city uh, in uh, Kaunas, the district of Shilani. Shilani district uh, is uh, uh, designed in a uh, very similar way how uh, in the uh, Soviet times uh, many sleeping districts were designed and constructed. Uh, those uh, tall gray buildings uh, one by one, not uh, that um, 
much diversity of other uh, items, uh, architectural buildings. It's uh, just the place where people would uh, come back from uh, their works, home to sleep, to relax before they go to work uh, next day. Uh, Shilani project uh, is one of those districts. And uh, Evelina Shemkutia uh, had uh, for a long time deep interest in the ways what is the narrative of uh, uh, this district and how in the artistic ways to talk about the history of, of this place. So um, she uh, touches upon many issues connected to uh, this district and particularly uh, the activity of gardening. The uh, gardening activity, which uh, basically took the shape of uh, people working in the area, uh, going uh, out of uh, their houses, finding some place where they could uh, do gardening, such uh, small places where they could grow some tomatoes or cucumbers or something what people would uh, prefer. And uh, uh, what makes uh, very interesting in the viewpoint of Evelina Shimkuti that uh, she notices that uh, this uh, gardening uh, activity is something what stretches uh, through many, many decades, uh, through uh, the decades when uh, people moved into Shilani uh, district, uh, 70s, 80s, and uh, the same people who moved into these districts at that time, now they are old pensioners and they are still gardening in the same places in the same uh, small pieces of uh, um, land. Uh, that activity is, uh, well, the, the land belongs to municipality. So uh, there are many layers how this occup occupying of the land, uh, uh, garden and growing something in the land, which is mun municipality owned land, not owned by, by these people, uh, how this uh, activity is, uh, negotiated being uh, perhaps not quite legal activity uh, as uh, people don't own the land, but they of their own uh, enthusiasm go and uh, garden and do it from year to year the entire uh, life. So uh, in uh, Shemkutia's um, uh, project, uh, the most interesting, at least for me subjectively part was that uh, she uh, opened up the discussion by inviting the international artists into artist residency. Basically, this uh, residency is uh, facilitated by her, sometimes even in, in her own home or in agreement with uh, some people who would uh, host the artists. So it's a very uh, warm and uh, welcoming into community initiative. Uh, and also the um, attempts to bring international artists into the place to open up the discussion, to uh, look for the new viewpoints upon the district and activities in them. As uh, in this uh, photograph, you can see one of the um, artist in residency was Elizabeth Hudson. She is from uh, UK and uh, she worked particularly with the project themed around bees uh, in the gardens, in these gardens, which uh, people have been taking care of for many decades. So uh, uh, she uh, was interested uh, uh, in the ways how, uh, the bees can be more actively introduced into this uh, area of, uh, of uh, gardening uh, activities. And uh, she did some workshops together with the experts who uh, have the knowledge about uh, the bees and uh, taking care of them and try to connect those experts with the local community and uh, to introduce more bees into the Shilani uh, district. Uh, and uh, now we are jumping uh, 
into uh, the project construction, which uh, is my project and uh, is uh, also uh, taking uh, place in Konas, the photograph which you can see now uh, on the screen, it's from Konas, the same city as uh, Shilani project uh, is, but uh, uh, still uh, the issues which were interesting and exciting for me were the removal of uh, the physical traces. Uh, in the uh, cityscape. So you might see the uh, blank spots on the towers of the bridge. And uh, after this, my presentation, you might guess what was there. There were the symbolics of the Soviet regime. Uh, how uh, in Konas these uh, issues of uh, removing or, well, more correctly, layering uh, uh, were uh, taken care of. So uh, the uh, copper plates were mounted on the uh, towers of the bridge. So uh, basically, the symbolics is there under the copper plates, but the towers are covered by the copper plates. So you don't see the symbolics anymore. They are beneath the copper plates. Uh, and uh, uh, when I was uh, working with uh, tracing the spots where the removal uh, of the symbolics of mo monuments uh, took place, I was uh, also uh, doing some performative activity. And that performative activity uh, consisted of uh, uh, me, being on the sites of removal and uh, putting up the documents, as you can see in the photo uh, on, on the top, the document uh, where it's officially announced that the sculptures and the symbols which were removed are coming back because of their artistic value. This document is the fake document, of course, and was part of the performance. But uh, uh, through this performance, I uh, gave the viewers the space for discussion in the way that I left the phone number where people could call and discuss the issues if they are against or if they have any comments about the sculptures or symbolics coming back. And uh, uh, while performing outdoor, I had uh, the other side of performance, well, uh, in the space of the gallery, it's uh, uh, called, um, at the time it was called Medalu Galeria, uh, the monumental art gallery in uh, Vilnius. One of the galleries belonging to the Artists' Union. And uh, as I said, uh, just uh, to accent that the gallery uh, has the identity of the gallery uh, working with monumental art. Uh, so uh, this, uh, well, this uh, black and white image is uh, from 2011. So uh, this project, this performative action, and also me being in the gallery and coming into conversations with uh, uh, people who called, not many people called actually, it was uh, just uh, uh, two or three calls. Uh, and um, there were also people in the gallery coming and uh, discussing and expressing their attitude just uh, on, on, on the site in the gallery in person. Uh, so uh, in, in this way, uh, the idea for this performance was to create a space of discussion, uh, give possibility for uh, having another platform, another uh, layer of uh, looking into the artistic practices of uh, the generation of artists uh, who were uh, active and working between 40s and 91, who were producing it, uh, these artistic outcomes as the main outcomes of, of their um, 
making, artistic making. And uh, uh, there are many layers, of course, in, in this uh, discussion, uh, many uh, ways uh, to see the value or no value and who is uh, uh, defining the value. Now we might come back to uh, the part of my presentation when I was saying that uh, the artists, the uh, generation of artists, members of artists union uh, before 1991, they were producing the sculptures and they were getting awards for these sculptures, national awards. So at that time of production, uh, the outcome of their production was uh, awarded. And when the political situation changed, uh, the sculptures gained different value. So uh, I'm interested in uh, these uh, many layers of uh, narrative value, the way how we reflect and talk about uh, art as the tool to talk about history, memory, uh, colonial uh, history, decolonizing. Uh, this image is uh, of my performative actions where I was uh, uh, distributing uh, the official documents, those fake official documents in the places where the sculptures were uh, removed. It's in Vilnius. Um, the same square which I was uh, mentioning to you just a uh, uh, few slides ago, the same square which now is redesigned into the recreational uh, square, square with uh, fountains and children are running uh, under the water and enjoying the uh, summertime. Um, so uh, if uh, to frame the conclusion of uh, my uh, lecture for today, I uh, can say that uh, the key points are that historical performance artwork through the examples of uh, the festivals AN88 and AN89 and the contemporary uh, artistic performative practices uh, of uh, Evelina Shemkutia's project and of uh, my uh, performance uh, production, they have uh, uh, many uh, lines in common as uh, art becomes uh, the arena for putting up the heavy discussions, the heavy issues of uh, painful history, memory of this history, told through generations or even experienced in the case of the artists participating in AM88, AM89. Uh, the palimpsest of the site, the palimpsest as uh, uh, in the definition of this word is a role where the script is written and then erased and uh, many layers you can see through the uh, erased parts of, of the uh, script. Similarly, being in the sites, being in the places, there are many layers of what had happened there, many layers of uh, um, historical aspects. As in the Shilani project, the history of uh, the district in Kaunas, or in my project construction, where layers by layers, the landscape is reshaped, removed, and uh, uh, is uh, serving different purposes uh, today. And of course, when we turn back into the context of the festivals in 1988-1989, we can see very conscious choice of the site for the performative actions. Not the capital city, not Kaunas as the second big city, but the, the place in Anikshi, far away from any 
places, sites which could bring artists into trouble. So there is always the narrative of the place which is going in parallel with the things, the issues which artists want to say through uh, their work, through their expressions. Uh, well, uh, I have uh, brought here uh, for you some uh, references which uh, I uh, used while uh, designing uh, today's uh, presentation. So uh, if you are interested in further uh, readings, uh, those are perhaps exciting for uh, you to have a look at. Uh, otherwise, I will... Uh, stop sharing uh, now and uh, uh, this uh, was the material which I prepared for you for today and uh, if there are any questions I would be very happy to answer them. Okay thank you very much uh, Maria for your uh, lecture and now I will check uh, YouTube canal for uh, some questions. Yes, we have any questions maybe. I will start with uh, uh, our discussion. And for me, it was very uh, interesting part uh, with uh, your presentation, uh, Lithuanian Performance Festival from uh, 1988 and uh, 1989, because we have a very similar uh, festival, no festival happenings uh, in the 60s. Uh, uh, in context of Melan Knižák. Melan Knižák is director of uh, Eastern of Luxus uh, group and uh, uh, it was uh, illegal even uh, this festival or no? Uh, in uh, Lithuania, mm -hmm. I uh, can say that there are uh, different aspects of uh, answer to this question. So, uh, First of all, uh, what is very interesting is uh, that um, this uh, festival, accordingly to uh, what I have learned from the organizers, mm -hmm. it was financed uh, by the uh, youth organization of the companies mm -hmm. because uh, the organization of the festival was collaboration between uh, the uh, musicians, the practitioners from the sound uh, part and visual arts. So in the year 1988, they had a funding uh, for accommodations for the basic materials mm -hmm. uh, they had all that so it was uh, quite quite legal yeah. <laughs> quite legal festival uh, the thing is that uh, uh, the presentation of uh, this festival for the um, authorities was uh, as uh, the um, yeah, youth festival for uh, music Mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, the content was as it became, that uh, it, uh, it became uh, the arena for uh, showing the resistance against the uh, regime. Uh, and uh, very interesting moment, what I know that uh, this uh, festival, they, uh, they uh, needed uh, to produce even some posters and to mm -hmm. put them in the Vilnius, but accordingly to the organizer, Sharuna Snagas, now, now I'm a bit quoting what he told me that uh, they put out the posters in Vilnius with very big hope that nobody will be attending uh, the festival itself uh, because it was so far away. And actually uh, they, uh, quite succeeded with that uh, because uh, they didn't have uh, that uh, uh, many external guests. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah. it was uh, uh, the participants 
who were the, the artists involved and people who came, they uh, were also the, the art related people. So they didn't uh, have uh, any uh, unexpected supervision or un unexpected mm -hmm. uh, issues the first year. Uh, the second year they didn't have funding, uh, but they decided anyway to continue the festival. So they had a bit uh, uh, more alternative uh, ways of uh, accommodation, just the, the tents, uh, but it went uh, very well. People, uh, people were enthusiastic and willing to, to, to work and uh, to, uh, to do it. Uh, so that that uh, that issue was also for me very very interesting and uh, surprising that they managed to get funding and they managed yeah. to do it on on uh, I must say very high level uh, mm -hmm. for, for the for the first year. Mm -hmm. So uh, and for example, uh, we have at uh, Prague Academy and Academy of Art and Design and Architecture uh, group of artists uh, with. Uh, organization uh, many uh, uh, exhibitions uh, illegal exhibitions with title confrontation and it was in the 80s but uh, without some finding yeah and it surprised uh, for me that uh, I know that it's in uh, lit uh, in Lithuanian uh, art history it's uh, something uh, with supporting and uh, how to have legal and illegal and uh, what do you think, uh, do you feel some uh, similar uh, points between uh, performance uh, before uh, uh, revolution and in uh, last decade, for, for example, in your performance, do you feel some connection on uh, uh, history of uh, performance art in uh, Lithuan Lithuania? Well, uh, I must... Uh say perhaps from the beginning uh, what is uh, different. Mm -hmm. I think uh, the artists of uh, the first uh, festival were very brave and very uh, good in uh, networking and uh, for me, uh, I didn't include uh, those uh, images in the presentation because of the uh, time frame, but uh, I can now say that, uh, uh, well, one of the performances was uh, done in a collaboration with the local uh, railway um, company in Anikshe, the small train. So. Uh, I have no uh, idea how well networking uh, and uh, pursuing of a company, uh, this railway company at the local level uh, was, but uh, they took over the entire train in agreement with uh, the railway company and performance was happening in the train while the train was moving. I would say that uh, contemporary uh, performance uh, artists uh, would, uh, I don't know if uh, such performance could happen because of uh, many layers of bureaucracy. And uh, mm -hmm. uh, at least I haven't heard of a performance uh, taking place in the entire train booked for the performance. So uh, this example shows that excellent uh, networking skills and uh, uh, they uh, were reaching their goals very well. Uh, I think uh, today uh, performers uh, are perhaps um, less um, supported mm -hmm. by the uh, various institutions, various uh, uh, companies uh not um, not to say uh, that well we we have better or worse conditions than the artists then it's, it's in, incomparable but uh, there is uh, just some nuance that maybe because of the curiosity or now i'm talking about the late 80s there was some some uh, ways to persuade uh, uh, the, the the local companies in giving the train for performance so uh, I must say that the uh, conditions for communication have changed. 
the arrangements, how we are uh, doing arrangements uh, when we are doing performances in the public spaces, uh, th those rules have changed. But what is in common? I think uh, the energy is uh, definitely there, <laughs> uh, <laughs> not depending uh, of uh, we talk about the past performance. And uh, now uh, I must say about the project, for example, by Evelina Shimkuti, uh, I am so uh, positively impressed by all the activity which she does. So artists uh, uh, do have a huge creative energy and uh, willingness uh, to promote the uh, local uh, stories, narratives into this wider mm -hmm. context. It was back then, it is uh, still uh, very visible, as uh, I mentioned, Evelina Shimkutia, her uh, practice. Yeah, and I think this is a very similar uh, point is that uh, these activities are in public space. Yeah, and public space is perfect for uh, some presentation, a new ideology, revision of our uh, history, and et cetera. Yeah, and I think that uh, we have one questions and uh, we are at the end. Uh, and thank you very much, uh, Maria, for your uh, presentation uh, you. lecture and uh, have a nice e event. Thank you so much for the yeah. opportunity. It was yeah. a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.